Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering human creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is Lara Downs, leading American pianist, entrepreneur, host of the NPR series Amplify, and I would be very remiss not mentioning that she is a Sphinx Medal of Excellence winner. Lara, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So I'm, you know, I'm so excited because, uh, you know, I've had the opportunity uh, to be able to get to know you and your music, your craft, uh, but not only that, your leadership uh, over many years and feel very honored uh, to have been able to uh, work and collaborate with you. So I am especially excited about today's interview, um, which is co-curated by with the Sphinx organization. And of course, Lara has uh, many different uh, interactions and involvement uh, with Sphinx in a host of ways, uh, which we will probably end up talking about. Uh, but I thought I'd kind of just initially delve in. You, you kind of are, are very focused focused on this, you know, uh, idea and theme of lifting every voice um, through entrepreneurship and artistry. And there's so many things about artists and their entrepreneurial skill sets and all the things we want to do to prepare them. Um, but first, I thought we would just delve in. You have a project called the Rising Sun Project. Could you share with our audience kind of what that is and what its overall goal is? Yeah, it's a hub. It's a hub um, recordings and performance project dedicated to music by Black composers, um, which owes its existence to the Sphinx Venture Fund and is you know, the result of many years of research and discovery on my part and this desire to really just retell the history of American music by you know, showcasing the diversity that is truly a part of it and embracing the traditions that have come together to make it. So the project launched in February of this year we are making recordings faster than <laughs> faster than anything, than anything that's possible. Um, a new EP every month, uh, four or five tracks every month, and those are going out to all the radio stations around the country and around the world, all the streaming services. And you know, one of the things that I think um, has to happen in order for us to have a different perspective on our musical lineage is really just to change what we hear, and in the most casual sense not by intentionally going into a concert hall, but by turning on the radio or by you know browsing Spotify to find this music easily. And so this was my solution to you know just like quickly and profoundly changing that that balance of what's available to listeners. And so and so for those who who have an interest and or might even want to be able to collaborate, what is the best way for them to find uh, Rising Sun and or be able to reach out regarding it? Um, honestly, via my website, there's a Rising Sun tab and there's a contact form on there. And we are hearing from people all the time. And it's wonderful. Just, you know, this community that's being built from colleagues and you know friends and complete strangers and it's really wonderful to experience the response I encourage people to please reach out so you know there especially this past year so many people have been talking about this important issue that you're referencing relating to diversity but you have taken that and actually created something and creating something that is already beginning to you know, have an impact and, um, and, and involving collaboration. So in other words, you've taken what is just for many often conversation and either you know, um, dissatisfaction with the state of things in our field and all of that, but you are able to translate that as an artist entrepreneur into actual work and actual impact how, right? So if there are those in our audience who are artists who are 
wanting to follow in your footsteps, wanting to have an impact with the things that they're frustrated about that they see in the field. Are there any kind of key kernels of advice or things that you have done that you think would be helpful for them as they try to embark on that journey? Well, you know me. I mean, I think I'm just constitutionally made so that I just do things when they come to me. And not everyone is like that. I mean, I want to respect sort of individual process. And, you know, it's important to feel comfortable and confident with what you want to do before you go do it. Um, I have a certain rhythm and tempo, but I think consistently what I say to anyone, professional, student, you know, and at any, wherever you are in this pipeline, do the thing that you believe in, that you want to see happen and do it at whatever scale you can. Don't be afraid that, you know, the action that you can take, the step you can take is too small. No such thing as too small, but just like do it and do it as soon as you're ready and then see what happens. You know, I, I, I talk to so many artists who, for example, are waiting and waiting and waiting to make a recording. You know, it's gotta be exactly the right time and it's gotta be exactly the right way. And in the meantime, their voice is not out in the world do a small thing. It doesn't have to be a full album. It doesn't have to be a big, you know, highly produced thing. Just let your work out there. Um, I, I don't know. I think that fear holds us back and fear should never hold us back. I love that. And I love just the overarching thing of, you know what, if you've got this idea, if you've got an artistic voice to bring out, do it. Just simply do it. Get started. It may not be perfect. It may not be the end goal that you want, but at least you're out there beginning. And I think that process, of course, leads to learning. And that learning process just makes everything you do better. Um, and clearly I've seen that trajectory uh, for you. But of course, nowadays, everything you do is phenomenal and perfect. So uh, oh. one of those things is this NPR series, Amplify. Share with our audience just, you know, how that came about. Um, and as you share that, um, and kind of what your goals are for the show, if you can also share kind of how it comes about, because I'll bet there's a few in our audience who are like, I would love an NPR show. How can I, <laughs> how do I, right? Like a lot of times people see leaders and they feel like they just lead completely different lives. Like somehow things are just paved out for them, right? In a way that they can't be for me. So if you could kind of share what are some of those things that our audience members could be thinking about as they think about their own trajectories, their own dreams? Sure. Well, Amplify, Amplify, um... Again, all roads lead to sink. <laughs> um, you know, what happened was that last March when all of my concert work got canceled and, you know, like everyone, I was extremely sad and extremely lost. And I, I, I literally texted your lovely wife and I said, give me something to do so I don't go crazy. And then I, I said, you know, why don't I just, like, there was this, this Tuesday series called Tune In Tuesday. So we were doing through Sphinx. And so I had a few conversations with colleagues like Eileen Perez, um, who did I talk to initially, you know, just some of our Sphinx family, because I wanted to know two things. I wanted to know, are you as freaked out as I am? <laughs> you know, am I alone in this or are we all freaked out? And I especially wanted to know how artists of color re were responding to the mixed, you know, the like double whammy of pandemic and, you know, racial upheaval and all the things that that was, all of the trauma of that. And those conversations were fascinating because yes, the answer was yes, everyone was freaked out. But at the same time, everyone was quickly pivoting. And I don't mean in the sense of like learning how to do, you know, virtual concerts. I mean, pivoting in the sense of really looking at purpose and really thinking about, okay, if this if this break is on right now, what do I want to do with this time internally and externally? Who do I want to be when I come out of this? And I thought that was amazing. And at the time I had just finished um, working with NPR. I, I had done a Tiny Desk concert, which I had to do as one of those first Tiny Desk from home concerts, which was also a, a blow initially. And so I just, I reached out and I said, I'm having these conversations with other artists and I feel like this is a moment in time that is dynamic and moving fast and we're capturing it. And if you remember, that was exactly the same time when there were institutional conversations happening. How do we change things? And you know, what's the hashtag today? And all these things which are super important, 
But what I wanted to show was we don't wait. There isn't it isn't like a trickle down thing where we wait for institutions to make change and then we as individuals, as artists benefit from that. No, we all have to work together. So, I mean, probably nothing has gotten greenlit quite as fast, <laughs> but, you know, and it was, it was obviously super, it's DIY, we Zoom conversations, but I'm so grateful to have had that impulse and to have taken that action because when I look back now at this year, almost a year of these conversations, they are so unique. And I think, you know, for a long time, we'll look back and to have documentation of what we actually went through. Because I don't know about you, but I can't remember in my head where I was six months ago. This year has been so blurry. So I'm happy to have it. Totally. I think that's part of your mo motivation with these conversations as well. Yeah, no, and I love how you just bring this, you know, let's just, let's do this. Like we understand this is what's mm -hmm. happening. How do we actually just do it and let's do it now. Um, and then I think that because of your work ethic and all that you bring a, a level of excellence, a level of care to the work that then builds upon itself. Um, and, and I think that kind of ties into that you've, all of these things that you're talking about, there's different partnerships, obviously the conversations you're having with people, but it seems like a lot of collaboration and just wondering kind of how you think about that, how you think about the things that you're gonna choose to do and, and kind of collaboration. I think that one of the things I learned when I was a very young pianist was that the danger of that could be to become more and more narrowly focused, to sit in this practice room by myself for six hours a day and just be in my head and be um, like almost in, in competition with myself, like just constantly driving myself to some undefined vision of perfection. Um, I think it's a really toxic thing. And I, so I have intentionally always reached outside of that, you know, tunnel. I think it's what makes me grow. I think it's what makes me recognize things in myself and in the world around me. I think it's what makes my ideas generate. Um, and the, the broader that is, the better, you know, I want to collaborate with people who work in different musical genres, who work in extra musical fields, who, you know, whose perspectives on the world can open up new vistas for me. And I think that all of us in, in our industry need to do that. I think that we emotionally, you know, our, our mental health, our, our well-being can be so much stronger when we have community. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I could not agree more. Um, and especially in these times. So unfortunately, we are just about out of time ourselves. <laughs> but I always love to ask of all of our guests, um, you know, this work that you're describing, while you've been able to be extraordinarily successful, there's got to be rough days, there's got to be days where you feel like, I'm just not gonna be able to do this, or things are overwhelming. How do you draw upon strength? How do you find inspiration in the toughest of times? Mm -hmm. I mean, I will say that it's just, you know, all of us who work really, really hard, I think we just have to kind of check ourselves sometimes. And there's a little voice, Aaron, there's a new little voice in my head that says sometimes you don't have to finish this tonight or you might be doing too much right now. It's brand new. I don't necessarily listen, but it's there. So that's exciting. <laughs> but I think that, it's super simple. If you have a purpose, a really clear purpose in what you're doing, then no matter how hard it is, no matter how exhausted you are and stressed, it, it, you're going to be okay. Like that's going to pull you through to the next day. And I feel like it's been, I've been working towards, you know, I've been working with this same purpose now for long enough that I, 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 I get it. Like I know it. It's, I don't have to question it. I know what I'm, I know what I'm doing and I know why I'm doing it. So wow. better days, worse days, but you keep going. Well, I am inspired by you. Lara Downs, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our world. Thank you so much for being on the show and for everything that you do. Thank you so much for having me. It's so great to see you. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you.